Hi and welcome to another video by me, Flow Joe. So today we are going to be looking at the Power Automate function of Workflow. So what does the Workflow function actually do? Well it actually gives you the information you need about the flow you're actually running. So what that means is that you can gather the name, the location, etc. of the flow that's currently in progress. So when we actually call Workflow, it returns us numerous things, such as the ID, the name, the type, the location, and within the tags, it actually gives us the flow display name, so the text name that we give our flows. It gives us the environment name, and the logic app name, so it actually gives us the ID of our flow, as well as the environment flow suspension reason. So you're more than likely going to be using this for flow display name, environment name, or logic app name. Now why would you be using this then? Well let's say you was capturing errors and you want to say this particular flow has an error and you're sending an email to someone. Or maybe you're running some, um, some flow that is running once a month that is generating invoices or something like that and you want to email someone to let them know that this particular flow has run and you want to include the, include the flow name. Well, this is how you do that. So let's have a look at this on Power Automate. Okay, so we're on Power Automate. We have a manual trigger for our flow. We are then going to create a compose action and use the workflow function. We don't pass any parameters. We simply call that to get the information for our currently running flow. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use pass JSON because we actually get some information back. Now what I did previously was I ran this flow and I just grabbed this information from the um, output here from the get flow information, which was the workflow. And I simply clicked generate from sample and I pasted it into here and click done. And what that does is it maps all of our properties from the output here into dynamic data so that we can then easily select that information. So let's pretend we have an error going on and we need to email someone that an error has occurred within this flow. Now obviously you need to use scope to capture that information, but we're not focusing on that right now. We're simply focusing on getting information from the workflow function. So as we've passed our JSON from the workflow output, if I click anywhere here, you can see the past JSON and I can get the ID, I can get the name, I can get the type, the location, the flow display name, which is what we were mentioning before at the beginning of this video, the environment name, the logic app name, which effectively is the ID of our flow, and the environment flow suspension reason, etc. So, how this works then is what are we what we've done is we've passed all that information into our past JSON, and it's going to then allow us to select this specific thing from our JSON which essentially is our flow display name, which is understanding the function workflow. So if I look up here, we are looking for understanding the function workflow, and then we're looking for the environment name. So let's run this and see what we get back. Now I'm using a temporary email, which effectively is just an, a, a, an email that's generated that only lasts until I close my browser just for the purpose of this viewing. So if I run this, to, uh, this flow now to this email address, we're expecting some information to come through via our email. So our flow has run successfully. We've got all the information back from our workflow and as you can see in tags we've got flow display name and we've got the full name of our flow that's currently running and as you can see at the top there it matches we've got the environment and I'm running it in my default environment and then we've also got the ID of that and then you've got additional information so we've passed that information here and it's mapped it for us 
And then we've got an output of mapped information, which allows us to use it dynamically. So what the email has done is it's obviously passed the email and then it's passed in the flow name. So understanding the function workflow has an error. And then we've populated the body with the flow information as well as the environment that it ran on. So if I open our temporary email here and just open the email, you can see that the subject contains the understanding the function workflow. And then we have the body with the environment information as well. So that is how you use workflow on Power Automate to get information about the flow that is currently running so that you can actually send notifications about it or you can provide information and even if you wanted to store flow runs in Dataverse or SharePoint. That's it from me, Flojo. Check out my blog at flojo.io for more guides on the Power Platform and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.